Okay, so let's pick up from where we left off last time. Uh, what we want to do now is we want to calculate the counts that we're going to need uh, for calculating the support of buying two things at the same time, right? So uh, here we're going to first tabulate the counts uh, in a table and then use that table to calculate our support, right? So um, I'm just gonna sort of quick make this up. So we're going to take all of our items here, copy them there. And I'm going to take the same exact ones and I'm going to do a transpose copy there to save ourselves some time. And I'm going to real quick, just make this look a little bit more consistent. So it's readable and looks pretty good. Okay. Uh, so this is the table that we're working with. And the first thing we're going to do is just build our set of counts. And we already know most of what we need to know to get this done, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to use count ifs to conditionally count either what's in both what's in the column and what's in the row. So um, just to give it an example of what this would look like uh, for the top, we're going to use count ifs. And the first count ifs that we're going to use is going to be indirect into the column into the G column. So we're going to refer to milk. And it's important here, I'm going to use a mixed reference. I'm going to lock G. And that's going to get us uh, the range that we actually want to look up. Then I'm going to put a comma and a one. And then we're going to have a second indirect lookup to what's here. And in this case, we're going to lock the row. And oh, sorry, we're going to need our indirect first. We're going to use indirect. Then we're going to refer there. I'm going to lock the row and wrap up the whole count ifs, right? So if we think about what this is doing, it's going to count where whatever the named range is that's uh, labeled in G12, it's going to count that range if it equals one and if the range above it in H11 also equals one, right? So in this case, we should get the same exact counts because we're looking up milk twice. We should get the same counts that we've seen for milk all along. So I click on that and that looks pretty good. Because of the way we've set it up, if I haven't made a mistake, I should be able to pull this down and pull this over and it should automatically adjust correctly to dynamically build all of these different counts that we need, right? So uh, this should take care of most of the things that we wanna do to do our calculation. I'm gonna blow that up just a bit, make it a little more readable. And uh, that's it, those should be our counts. So we probably wanna just check you know, a couple of these just to make sure that um, this is correct. So it looks like it's saying that the uh, the joint support for both milk and bacon is zero. In other words, there are no transactions where both milk and bacon occur. And that looks correct. Those are the three transactions with bacon, uh, no milk. And the six transactions with milk no bacon. So it looks like this is correct. Um, we've done the work that we need to do to calculate these. So uh, we can always hand check them later. But for now, this is probably pretty good. The next step is we want to take these counts and convert them into support, which is 
uh, pretty straightforward. So we're going to grab this and we're going to grab this. Going to change some labels. So this is going to be support and uh, just sort of make this look a little bit nicer with some outlines. And what we want to do next is take each of these cells and divide it by the total number of transactions. So this is pretty straightforward. We're going to refer to the corresponding cell above, divide it by, this is going to be an absolute reference because we don't want that to change. And when we click OK, this should get us the same value that we see for milk, right? So. When we pull this around, everything should adjust correctly. Now, a couple of quick things that you can check just to make sure that this is doing what you want it to do. Uh, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so it's easier to read. We can um, see the diagonal down this line should match exactly the supports that we see here, right? So the diagonal should be a good indicator of whether we're on the right track and it looks like we're on the right track. So these are the supports of say cereal and milk or eggs and milk. Um, you can see that uh, the support metric is symmetric, meaning um, there's no difference the order doesn't really make a difference. So that's why the eggs and milk is the same as the milk and the eggs. And that's what we would expect. So we've now seen how we can calculate the support of two items in our set of transactions. In the next video, we're gonna talk about confidence and uh, the final video will be about Lyft. Have a great day.